Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and today we're going to take a look at how to create a force field effect using shaders in Unity. So let's go ahead and dive in and see how this works. Okay, so we've got a relatively empty scene here. The only thing is this Jammo character made by the extremely awesome Mix and Jam. If you don't follow him on YouTube, you absolutely should be subscribed to his channel. Uh, you can download this from the Asset Store, it's free to use. So the only thing we have in this project is basically just this little runaround that we got going on here. And I have it set up in the Universal Render Pipeline. So we want to create our shader force field effect. So what I'm going to do is create a sphere that we're going to use to represent it. So I'm going to create a 3D sphere and I will just move it to the center of our world and I'm going to grow it up so it covers the player. So let's make it whoop, not 44, 4 by 4 by 4. That should be plenty big. Uh, and I just have a little script attached to the player as well to enable me to turn this on and off when the game is running. So I'm just going to drop that in there so we can see all this does is I hit a button, oh, well, I don't want it to be a, have a sphere collider, because obviously it should be a force field that is just looks like a force field. Obviously, if you want to use it in your game to bounce bullets off and things like that, you can leave it as a physical thing, but we do not want it to interact with the player. So that's all it does, it just turns it on, makes it grow nice and big. So we need to focus on the physical aspect of doing this. So I'm going to create a folder with that I'll call a force field shader. And in here, I'm going to create a new uh, shader, and we're going to create a PBR graph shader, which is kind of the default uh, shader that most you will use most of the time. And I'm going to create a force field shader, and then I'm going to create a material to use this. So I'm going to just create a new material that I'll call force field mat for material, and I'll drag this shader onto it will make that material use the shader we have. Obviously, you could also go and select it here and go to shader and then shader graphs and force field shader. That would be the other way to set, to assign it. So then we obviously need to put this on the sphere here. So let's grab our sphere and I'm going to click and drag this into the material section like so. And there we, we have our material in place. So now that we have that, we need to open this up so that we can edit it using the shader graph. So let's open our force field here. I'm going to double click it. And it'll open up here and I'm going to pop this out so it's in its own floating window so I can move it around and see what's going on as I do different things. And let me just get the corner here. There we go. Okay. So with that in mind, then we see we have our, our material there. We have a couple of basic things. First thing we're going to do is set it up so that it can emit some color at the edges because our force field, obviously we'll want it to look a bit nicer. So let's see if we can customize its color first of all. So let's go into our billboard up here and we're going to add a color input and we'll call this the let's just call this the main color and we'll set a default color let's go with a nice kind of blue force field effect and i'm going to put the alpha value all the way up and then i'm going to drag and drop this into our shader editor and then plug this into the albedo here and that'll give us a nice little color of our uh, material so if i just save this we can see very, very simple. All we've done is change the color of it here. But to make it look a bit nicer, we can make it glow. So what we can do is switch it the mode here. If I can just stretch this out a bit wider, I can switch the mode here to HDR. So then if you click on it, you can control the intensity of the of the brightness. So I can put that in there and then I can put the color into the emission bracket as well. You can do one either or either. I could remove it from one and just have it in the emission. Let's see what that looks like, first of all. So if I save this, now and we look at it you can see whoa it's really really bright i could change the default color down a little bit like so save that and it doesn't make too much difference but it does in in decrease the brightness a bit or, a, a little bit but let's go and put this into the albedo slot as well so then if i save it there we go we get a nice fully colored blue uh, force field the next thing we're going to do is use something called a fresnel effect a fresnel effect uh, although it's spelled like Fresnel. So if I just hit space here and type in Fresnel effect, or Fresnel is how it's supposed to be pronounced, this creates this kind of uh, highlight effect at the edge of the visible object. So I can combine that with my color, for example. So I could use a multiply here to combine both of those together. So I can combine my 
main color like so and put this out into both of these and now if I save that let's go back down here you can see oh we get this nice cool effect like that which looks pretty nice but the problem with that is obviously we cannot see the player we've got black at the center of it so we don't want it to go like that so I'm going to put this back to being the color output here and I'm going to remove this multiply and what I'm going to do is instead of sending the this for now out to the colors we're going to sell it out to the alpha value so I can pop that in there like that and now if I save it if we look back oh look at this all of a sudden we have the ability to see the player but we've got this nice harsh edge here now it's very very harsh at the moment so if I change the alpha clip threshold here down to zero that'll give us a much grad much more gradual look to it and we also want to on the settings over here for PBR we want to change the uh, surface from opaque to transparent so we're working with transparency so we need to make sure that we do that so then let's save this and now there we go we've all of a sudden got a relatively simple looking force field and just while I'm looking at this here we also don't really want this force field to be casting a shadow like this so I'm going to get my sphere and I'm going to make sure I turn cast shadows to off so there we go now we have the force field looking a bit nicer we also it would be nice if we could control how much of this blue is showing so we're going to create a couple of values to control that so we're going to create first of all for now we're just going to have a vector one here that we're going to call the edge size like so and you can see we have an input here this is this if we scroll this up and down you can see this controls the amount of effect of the Fresnel effect so I'm going to get this edge size and pop that here and we're going to hook that in there and we're going to give this a default value of let's say two and then if we save this again look at our shield there we go it now looks a little bit different and we can go and play around with that so if I go to my force field here I can adjust the edge size within the material so we now have our edge looking a bit nicer but that's not all we want to do let's, let's make this force field look a bit more interesting and we're going to add a scrolling texture effect to it so for that we're going to need to add a texture that we're going to use as an input so I'm going to add a new texture 2d and then I'm going to set a default texture. I have a texture that I uh, got specifically for this, which is this frosty one I have here. So I'm just going to drop that in. That's my default texture we're going to use. And to be able to use this in our scene, we can drag the texture 2D here in like this. And then we need a sample texture node. So sample texture 2D. And then that takes in the sample into here. And there we go. We can see our texture there then what we can do is combine that with our Fresnel effect so I'm going to use a multiply here so what I'm going to take from this is just one of these values because it's just a black and white image so I'm just going to grab the uh, or from this and we'll pop that in there and then we'll take the output of this into here and then the output of this into our alpha and then you can see we now have this wavy pattern so let's save this and again if we pull this down now uh, we need to apply the texture in our inspector here so I'm going to select that and now we get this kind of frosty looking effect around the edge so if I change the edge size like this there we go obviously if you pull it down too low you get weird things happening but that's okay we're not too worried about that so now we have this effect going on here but it would be nice if we could do some extra things like for example if we could make the edge appear a bit more solid and this kind of fades into the edge and it would also be nice if we could um, make it so that this moved so that's what we're going to do first of all is to make it move around and making it move is actually really easy to do to create a scrolling texture in our shader editor here what we can do is just create a time node so time basically works like time dot delta time it multiplies every frame and what we can do is we'll create a value to control how fast it's going to move so a vector one that we'll call uh, scroll speed that by default we'll put this at 2 and then what we're going to do is multiply this multiply these two things together so we're going to multiply our speed by our time so that's essentially like saying multiply your speed by time dot delta time and then we can control the offset of our sample texture over here on the UV element by creating a tiling and offset 
in here and that sends an output to here which by default doesn't do anything because we haven't changed anything over here but what we can change is if we look at the x-axis here for example if we ch keep changing the x-axis you can see it's scrolling this texture and same with the y-axis we could do that too but we're only going to control one of these for now so what we need is to take this one value and output it as two values here into our offset so for that we're going to create a vector 2 and we're just going to put as the input to the x-axis this and then output this into our offset and then all of a sudden we now have our speed scrolling away like crazy that's probably way too fast so let's put that down to 0.5 I think that looks a bit nicer and now if I save this we won't be able to notice too much different in our shader editor if you move your mouse around different windows and things you'll see it moving but if I go ahead and play we'll also see uh, once that goes if I press my button there we go we have our sphere appears in the world so that's fine and dandy but we have that scrolling but that's not all we want to do so like I said we want to make this look a bit nicer so what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to add an extra step into here I'm going to add something called a smooth step node which is going to take the input from this as in here and then we're going to put this out into multiply as well and at the moment that's not doing anything but what this can do is allows us to control how bright everything is so if I pull this number down for example everything will look a lot brighter and if I pull the x value up it'll get a lot darker so what I'm going to do is put that about 0 and this to about 0.12 so now it's much brighter overall and what I want to do is actually create two different Fresnel effects that I'm going to use one to represent this kind of texture that we have here and one to represent uh, a little edge ring around the edge of our uh, of our shader and our material so for that what I'm going to do is we have our edge size here I'm going to add another one for another vector one that we're going to call inner size and again I'm just going to give this a default value of one so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add another Fresnel effect in a minute but I'm actually going to make the inner size control this one because this is controlling if you pop that in there this is controlling the scrolling texture effect of this and then in between this to make this a little bit more harsh we're going to add another one of these smooth step nodes smooth steps are very handy for things like this so we're going to pop this in here again we're going to take some input like that and put this out into the multiply here and then I'm going to control this smooth step I'm going to put this x value at 0.13 and the other value at 0.51 I think there we go that sort of gives us a much more harsh kind of force field effect let's save as we're going here to see how this is looking in our view here so there we go we're now having this look a bit more obvious in our screen and the next thing I'm going to do is back up the top here I'm going to add another Fresnel effect that we're going to use for the edge of our object so I'm going to add Fresnel effect here, like so. Uh, let me just change this. Uh, edge size isn't doing it at the moment, but I'll change my inner size down a little bit, like that. And then what I'm going to do is, so we have our Fresnel effect. We need to control that with our edge size, like so. And I'm just going to move this main color out of the way for the moment. And then what we're going to do is, with this Fresnel effect, again, we're going to smooth step it down. So I'm going to add a smooth step, like so. I'll put this to here. Change this. I have this, let's say, about 0.27 and 0.25. These are values I've arrived at with playing around with the shader, obviously, beforehand. And then I'm going to output this to an add node this time. So add. And if I just move this over here, I'm going to add our output of this together with the output of this effect so basically what we're going to get is a combination of both of those so now we have a little hard ring around the edge and our filled in inside so now I'm going to output this to our alpha and let's save that and we'll see how this looks now so you can see whoop, we've got some strange things happening here so I can play around with the edge size like this and our inner size we need to scroll up Okay, so we're getting some weird things happening with our inner size, and that's because we want to do one extra thing. We currently have these two Fresnel effects going together, and that's happening 
we're basically adding both of these together and it's giving us weird things happening here. So what we want to do is actually back in here where we have our inner size and our edge size, we want our Fresnel effect on the inside to be kind of relative to our edge effect. So if I turn my edge size down quite a bit, so it make it much smaller by making it bigger, and then we can adjust this value and play around with it, and there you go, you get this kind of, we get it appearing eventually. But that's really hard to manage. So what we're gonna do is actually divide these numbers together. So I'm gonna add a divide node, like so. And we're gonna put our edge size from here into there, and we're gonna put our inner size in here. So we're saying our edge size is gonna be divided by our inner size, and we'll output this to our Fresnel effect. So now you can see all of a sudden we get a much smaller and tighter edge to our effect here. So then let's save that. We'll lose that big blue outline there, we should at least. And then I can control this. So my edge size, I'm gonna make it a bit smaller and then my inner size, we can scroll it up like this. I'm not really sure why we're getting this blue effect on our world. If I play the game, yes, our force field is operating correctly when I play the game. I feel like there's a weird thing happening with our our scene view here. Okay, so I just played around with the values there a little bit. I, there's some weird things happening with my uh, Unity at the moment. This shouldn't be happening. This wasn't happening before, uh, so I don't really know what's going on here. But the important thing is it's not affecting our game view at all. So we'll just continue with the final bit of this, which is to add a, if I switch to my game view, add an overlay color to our scene here. So I'm going to, in here, to just give the effect that this is a full force field. We're going to take the same color that we already have. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to apply that into our alpha value here. So essentially we're just going to add down the bottom here another vector one that we'll call uh, overlay. And I'm going to give that a default value of about 0 0.05 and then drop this in here. And we're going to multiply, or sorry, not multiply, we're going to add this to our existing effect that we have here. So put this in here and then add this to this effect. So now if I obviously, if I increase this value to 0.5 even, you can see it overlays it here like this. So let's put it back down to 0 0.05 and we're going to output this into our alpha value now. And now we get a little bit of a shade on top of our force field. So if I save this, and then look in here, once that compiles, there you go. You can see there's a slight bit of shade to it. Let's increase how much that's happening here. So I'm gonna put the overlay up a little bit more. I'm gonna play around these edges here. So I like having the edge actually relatively small here and then the inner size, pull this down a bit as well. So we get a nice hard edge, you can see here, and our inner size is just seeing it a little bit. So I'm gonna add this sphere as a child of my player so that I can move it around with me. And then I go if I go ahead and play the game, once things start running, there we go. If I hit my force field, we get our force field appearing and we can run around and have it disappear and reappear again. So perfect. That's how we can add a very simple little force field effect into our game without taking too much time and having something cool that we can use over and over again. I'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon.